Hi, I'm Tom Sullivan, one of the geniuses behind Sam Raimi's amazing Evil Dead 2. Welcome to Behind the Screams. We uh, shot this in Wadesboro, North Carolina. And uh, to open with, there's uh, my wife, Penny Sullivan, with Richard Domeyer and Sarah Berry at the airport location. Did a nice shoot there, and Sam put a bunch of us in cameos. Uh, very exciting adventure time, and I was uh, lucky to take a lot of photographs here that I'm sharing with you. There's Richard in makeup and Ted in makeup with Mark Showstrom. There's Bruce being made up, getting as perfect as he can. There's Lou Hancock getting sprayed down. Bruce again, looking intent. A lot of fun here. This is in the, the location set. And uh, there's a photo of Bruce in his white pants that I used for my uh, uh, photo for the art of the Hero of Prophecy page, one of the lost pages. And uh, uh, he changed his pant color, interestingly enough. That's the Fajan School in uh, Wadesboro, North Carolina, where we filmed it. And that's the side of the building where my office was. Or, that second uh, window, set of windows in there. The uh, Showstrom crew had a party and invited everybody, and there's the poster they made, drawn by Mike Tersick, an amazing sculptor. It was kind of a fun, uh, fun shoot, Lara long and grueling. Oh, here we have Bruce and his uh, body double filming the, uh, the mirror scene from, from Evil Dead 2. And as you can see, the uh, actual mirror had a cutout, and there was another mirror opposite set there. Bruce and his Mark Schostrom makeup of evil ash. Very scary. And uh, his own teeth, actually. No, of course, that's not true. And Bruce had to go into serious weight training to get that ash-ripped look. And there he is, and he's taking a quick break to be photographed by me in his gym. What a guy. He's a, he's a real trooper. Here's a photo by Tony Elwood, the prop master, who also built the uh, special... Uh, chainsaws and things, and this is one of the stunt copies uh, for it. Here's a, a, the miniature set for the bridge sequence, and this was built by Gary Jones and his folks. There's the uh, cabin on the Harry Huntley property in North Carolina, and uh, it was just the, the shell of the building, and they use that for the exteriors. There are a number of fake trees out there, too, that I believe are coming up in some photos. There's Dan Hicks and Sarah Berry taking a break in between shooting, in character and ready to go. So these long night shoots are really, really interesting. Uh, everybody's working so hard on these movies. And there's a, a shot of uh, the cabin and location. There's a sound guy holding up a boom, and you can see everybody intently working. Now here's uh, at the Fajan School Gymnasium, we built the uh, the ca interior cabin sets. It was an amazing uh, copy of the original. Uh, Rob actually said, Tom, you got to see this, took me to the set. It had all been propped up and dressed and everything. And it was a, a eerie flashback to Evil Dead to the set. It, they did an amazing job of copying it, down to all the smallest details. In the yellow cap is Blanche Sindelar, property master. And there's Lou Hancock getting ready for her shot. She did a great job as Henrietta, memorable job. There's Sam trying to wake up Bruce. Bruce, you gotta act, come on. You got a movie here to make. Or Bruce is ignoring him. Actually, I'm sure he's focused on his role and listening to every single word of brilliant uh, direction. There's Bruce just taking his no another tumble down the steps in anguish. There's Brian Ray having his uh, teeth examined by Sam. Sam's very, very diligent about uh, the crew's good dental hygiene. Actually, this is probably some kind of test or something to see what... Oh, I like this shot. It's just perfect that it's out of focus. Sam was so... Oh, I mean, the guy's in incredible demand on the set. He's got to make a thousand decisions a day. And there's a hand. Uh, I cast that right off of Bruce's hand, and it's actually a resin thing for one of the stop-motion shots. It wasn't, we went with a different direction. Each little hair there was hand laid in. There we are shooting it. There's uh, my animation cameraman, the uh, brilliant uh, Larry Larson, Look, uh, checking out the shot, lining it up so it's absolutely perfect. 
and uh, they actually wanted to go with a, a moving hand. And uh, here's uh, some makeup by Greg Nicotero, I believe, one of the Showstrom crew guys, who's now a, went on to K and B in his own uh, amazing success. And it's a beautiful, beautiful job they did here. This was uh, photo references for one of the hand shots that I had to do. Need to melt, match things very carefully. Richard Domeyer in the uh, Evil Ed makeup. And boy, there's now there's a Evil Ed stunt head, one of the uh, you know little props that we made. And so we always had it more and more extreme, but this is a brilliant job by Mark Schrostrom and his crew. Now there's a, a shot cut out. You can see the Evil Ed uh, skull there with the exposed brain. Very rare because that was excised from the film. And there's uh, what's left of Linda or Denise Bixler's uh, torso from uh, the uh, decapitation shots there. Very gory stuff. Here's another photo by Tony Elwood of the evil uh, Ed chopped up head. Disgusting. Wonderful. Oh, and a very rare shot of the evil Ed skull, also supplied by Tony Elwood, the prop maker for uh, Evil Dead 2. Greg Nicotero talks to uh, Mark Schostrom, and uh, uh, they had an amazing crew with an astounding amount of work to do. Holy cow, they were, and there's, there's an example. There's Ted Ramey under the Henrietta makeup. And uh, it's great to have uh, your little brother you can torture on films, and Ted's an amazing trooper. Here's a sculpture by Mike Tursik for my stop motion sequence of uh, the uh, Henrietta head pop-up. Um, it looks just like Lou in the makeup. Uh, it doesn't, but we didn't have a, a, a reference of Ted in the makeup yet, so it doesn't quite blend, but that's the way it goes. That was a stop motion armature, and here's a evil Ed head that uh, would come out of the basement. Now swallow your soul, swallow your soul. Love that stuff. Great sounds. And uh, it was a big, mighty thing and held up by wires and strings and puppeted very carefully. Now here's some of my drawings that I did to help prepare me for the uh, uh, for the shoot. Uh, have to draw it over and over again, trying to figure out how to do things the best way, the cheapest way, the quickest way, uh, with the greatest effect. Uh, at one point, you can see those drawings show a, a disintegration. There were, were going to be recapsulization of the original finale from Evil Dead, but it was cut uh, for budgetary purposes. Here's drawings of the uh, uh, of the book I created for the beginning of Evil Dead, where the face of the book comes alive, undulates, opens, and its mouth and swallows the camera. Uh, still have that prop. It's very kind of neat. Here's uh, one of the flying book uh, sketches, as well as uh, some other little doodles. And you might even notice I've even got little budget notes. Here's the Kandarian dagger. I gave Sam the original dagger from Evil Dead. He brought it back, and I, have, I made a casting of the hilt and I hated the blade, so I redesigned one. Oh, there, there's John Walter, who played the, uh, the head, the segmented hand of Ash that's crawling around. That's me working on, uh, on, the, on one of the stunt, uh, painting one of the stunt copies of the, uh, of the dagger. That would be mounted on it. Here's another photo by Tony, and uh, the, he um, actually created the mount and everything and cast this, uh, it's a f soft foam uh, blade, so that could be stuck in Dan Hicks. There's uh, Rob Tappert uh, tweaking his own nose, he'd love to fool himself with that. And there's uh, Josh Becker on the right. Uh, they were uh, have little cameos as uh, knights, of course. There they are again, and Blanche Sindelar, the prop master, is uh, sealing Josh into his uh, into his suit of armor so he can fight the terrors of the deadites. There's Bruce Lane on the ground, slacking off as usual. No, of course, that's an important scene from the movie. Up on the hill there, we see the miniature, or the bigature, I guess they call them these days, of Castle Kandar. Uh, actually, a very, uh, if you look, I think there might be a shot in here, but it's all just built up a uh, little bit of depth to it, but actually just a miniature with a, a uh, force perspective kind of look. They're very effective, very effective. And this is shot like in a quarry or highly eroded area uh, 
several miles from uh, our Wadesboro site. Take this, you evil deadite. One of the fun shots. Big, big cast of, uh, of uh, knights on horseback. Now here's one of the props Tony made. This is for the laughing room scene. You can see the air bulbs that will help propel that. Here's Mike Genesco in a, uh, uh, suited up for a makeup test for um, the uh, Professor Noby ghost appearance. They would do tests on things. Here's one of the fake trees that would later come alive um, uh, in miniature, thanks to Gary Jones's mi miniature trees. And uh, this was built up out of you know, some kind of polyurethane foam and structure and everything. Now you can see part of the uh, tree limb that bursts into the, uh, into the room at the finale of Evil Dead 2 uh, in order to feed ash into the rotten apple head, as we called it, this horrible creature right here. Uh, on the other side, as you can see, there are a couple of faces of the other doomed uh, folks that have been swallowed whole by this evil creature. There's a nice shot of Ash. Join us! Join us! A fate too horrible to imagine. Here's another Tony shot of uh, the rotten apple head being touched up. Got to keep it nice and bright and gooey. Uh, for that uh, original opening sequence of Evil Dead, Mike Turks had uh, sculpted this brilliant um, miniature based on Sam Raimi. Sam was going to play the Scotty part in the recap of Evil Dead. And uh, this was for a stop motion animation meltdown I was going to do. Never quite happened. Uh, this is uh, early designs for my Flying Deadite. I sculpted the, uh, did the skull over a stop motion armature, little ball and socket jointed thing. Uh, the clay uh, is uh, super sculpy, uh, great stuff, love it. And, uh, but it, uh, Sam, I showed Sam these early designs and he wanted it more fierce, like a little old lady. It confused me too, but I shortened, I made it less witch-like and I actually kind of sculpted it more like a variation of the uh, uh, makeup design I did on Ellen Sandweiss for the original Evil Dead when she played the Deadite uh, version of Cheryl. There I am working on uh, the uh, stop-motion armature of the flying Deadite. It was uh, built up over an armature created by my uh, old company Illusion Engineering I had with Bob Meese. Uh, we had aluminum armatures, very lightweight and nice and strong. Worked quite well, I thought. There's the more complete skull uh, version. Uh, the wings were cast separately. And uh, the skull actually had uh, a couple of points of, uh, of tweaking so I could actually create expressions. There, Brian Ray, my, the assistant who kept me sane during this film, uh, is posing with the Deadite. He was in uh, the Wadesboro shoot as well as when we came back to the Detroit area. Here's another photo by Tony Elwood of the Flying Dead, and I really like that shot. Uh, you don't actually see the tail in it. Uh, the uh, sequence kind of got truncated because there were some problems with the background plates, but it's supposed to be a whole kind of a Harry Hausen sequence where he comes down and battles the knights and everything. But I based the tail on a uh, kind of a seahorse, but he also had this big, long, flat blade. Now there's a there's the full-size uh, exploding head deadite, and I'm actually underneath it, uh, running, controlling the uh, those uh, rods coming out of the uh, uh, armpits or the elbows rather. And uh, there, Gary Jones is uh, packing it with primer cord to blow up the gelatin head he cast from my sculpture. Uh, Gary's a very versatile guy. There's the after picture of all the gore of the exploded head. If you want to see what it looks like exploding, watch the movie frame by frame and see it all disappear. And uh, I made this as quick as I could. It's all basically clay built up over wood uh, and uh, covered with uh, liquid latex to kind of give it a skin thing. Oh, here I'm animating uh, with uh, a propane torch the uh, melting or the withering flower effect uh, in a very brief scene. Here's a, for the, re, for the recapitalization of um, 
of the Evil Dead or origin, uh, I did shoot a Book of the Dead that was melting. Here I am animating that, uh, that completed book where the face undulates, comes alive, and swallows the camera. That was about a 10-hour shoot, as I recall. Here Sam directs uh, Bruce on the uh, blue screen stage that they'd set up in the Fajan school. The uh, oven there was on big cables and everything. Uh, Larry Larson is, is photographing a, uh, another sequence that uh, unfortunately got dropped. I'd painted a series of paintings to represent uh, a horror uh, journey that Bruce would go through. Uh, there I am uh, spinning the uh, vortex around. I did two of them, and they're supposed to be superimposed as they're spinning and be zooming in on one or another to create a, a, an effect, but it never uh, made it to the final composite. There's Tony Elwood, property builder, and he, a um, uh, really terrific guy, he's now a filmmaker himself. There's Mike Genescu, uh, when he's not uh, being used in photographs, he was the one of the uh, editors, assistant editors. Sam Raimi there at our uh, at the finale of the shoot uh, organized a Evil Dead 2 talent show that we all participated in. Now here's a, a fun scene with uh, some of the office folks. And uh, there's Blanche Sindelar uh, helping uh, Tony Elwood with his magic act. And we had a lot of fun, it was a lot, of, it was a nice crew. And oh, oh, there's, uh, I believe that's Ted Raimi, Sam in the middle with the long hair, Rob Tappert, and I'm pretty sure that's David Goodman on the end with the other guitar, uh, throwing us a good party, entertaining us all. Thank you very much. You take care.